Welcome back everyone, it's Victor Campos again. So in our last video, we started to set up a basic HTML project just to get acclimated with Visual Studio Code. For this week's homework, you'll need to read the first chapter in our book, JavaScript and jQuery by John Duckett. And we're going to create a project based on the topics in that chapter. Now, the thing is that when you deal with the most basic concepts of a language, the first few lessons and the first few assignments are not going to be very flashy or showy of what you can do. Once we get further, chapters 3, 4, 5, and 6, you can do a lot of complexity. But we need to start off at a low level and then ramp up our knowledge. So assuming you have already read chapter 1, you should watch this video. I'm going to open Visual Code. You may have your previous project still open or not. If you don't, I'm going to open a folder. You can go to File, Open Folder, and find your Week 2 folder and select it. So Week 2 has one file index.html. That's the standard name we use in most projects. So JavaScript is one of the three columns of modern web design. There's HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. HTML is for structure, CSS is for design, and JavaScript is for interactivity. If you're interested in HTML and CSS, we have other classes at Southwestern College such as CIS 152 that really dig deeper into it. We're going to focus on JavaScript, but we still need to know a little bit of HTML and a little bit of CSS to be able to do anything meaningful in JavaScript. If you haven't done so, watch the previous video where we created this basic template file. I can reuse this file over and over on subsequent chapters. So what you can do is make a copy of this to reuse. I can copy this starting file somewhere else so that I can reuse it on my future chapters so that I don't spend time recreating everything here. So I assume we've got these basic 12 lines of code so far. I'm going to add one more thing at the end so that I know who to give the grade to. I'm also going to zoom in so it's easier for you to view. In Visual Code, you can go to View we have zoom, we have the ability to zoom. So I'm going to zoom in, maybe something like that. What that also does is it zooms in my explorer on the left. So I'm going to hide it You can click the icon there to hide it. So we can just focus on the code. Your line numbers don't have to be exact, but if they match up with mine, that's nice. I'm going to create a comment in HTML. You see that was the angle brackets, exclamation point, dash, dash. And here we're going to have a part where you are going to have your name, the date, and the project. When you turn this stuff in, I want to know who to give the A plus to. So obviously you'll fill in this stuff when you turn in your projects. I'm going to save that. And again, assuming you've already read chapter one, we're going to put together something based on that chapter. So the way we'll work is we will have a script block where our JavaScript will exist. Now, the style of your code, meaning you're indenting and all of that stuff, how you write it, that's going to be a sort of a personal choice. There's a lot of arguments that happen when people try to figure out, should you tab your code or should you press space in your code? Everyone's right, everyone's wrong. You need to figure out what works best for you and stick with it. And if you're in a team, everyone should be on the same page in style. If you're just getting started in coding, let me show you the best style, which is my style. 
which I learned from other people, other classes and instructors. So all of this is valid, whichever you like to use. I'm going to mention something early on that's kind of advanced, but I want to mention it early on to, to get good um, coding practices. Open and close parentheses, open and close parentheses, semicolon. We're going to use something known as an immediately invoked function expression. This will make more sense like five chapters later, but I want to do it early on. So for the moment, just trust me. Back inside the first pair of parentheses, function. Notice again, as I start typing, visual code will want to suggest various code to help me type. You can ignore them or you can select them as you wish. For the moment, I'll ignore them. Another open close parentheses and then open curly brace, close curly brace. So this line right here is an immediately invoked function expression. The short answer is it makes your code better. It makes your JavaScript code better. Long answer is a long answer, which we'll get to later. One of the reasons I like visual code is because it will help you complete your opening and closing brackets and all of that good stuff. So make sure it looks like mine. Then you can press enter in between the curly brackets. Then we'll start a quotation mark and quotation mark use strict semicolon. This is another example of something that'll make more sense later on, but I want to do it early on because it'll be useful. Next line, var person equals curly brackets, semicolon. We're going to create an object. JavaScript is an object-oriented programming language. Again, all of the gory details are in the chapter. So if it looks like I'm glossing over something, it's in the chapter. Make sure you read it. So we're going to create an object of person. This person will identify a person, the attributes of a person. So JavaScript will understand this object in a more complex way. I will break these curly braces. The first property of this object will be last name, space, colon, quotes, your last name, comma. So the object of person will have a property of last name set to a value of campos, in my case, your last name. Notice the syntax of the quotation marks, the colon, and I've typed last name with a capital letter in between. This is again an example of what is the style that you've developed in typing your code? Because last name capital N, last name lowercase n are both valid. They're both right, they're both wrong. But you just want to be consistent with your code, especially if you're working in a team where everyone puts a capital letter there and you don't, that's going to cause problems. So the short answer is write it like how I'm writing it, because I'm the instructor and I'm right. Not really, but just to have a baseline, you can follow it this way. Comma, first name, colon, your first name. So we've got this object, two properties, last name, first name, values of Campos and Victor. After the curly brace that was part of the person, notice you can highlight a curly brace to find its pair. After that, press enter a couple of times, then we'll write console dot log, open and close parentheses, and we'll write person, at the end, semicolon. I want to see this result in the web browser. So I'm going to save, remember to save your work. Did you see that number went away because it showed it, there was one file that was not saved. After I saved it, the number went away. 
I then want to go back to the folder and double click the file to run it in the browser. Any web browser is fine, but as I said before, I'm going to go with Google Chrome. It still only says hello world, even though I'm setting up an object of a person. Will I output that result to the console, not to the main visible part of the screen known as the viewport? I output person to the console. In Google Chrome, you can press F12 on your keyboard. Firefox is the same. You can press F12 on the keyboard, or you can right-click Inspect. You'll get a panel either on the right side or perhaps at the bottom for the developer's console. I like to have it on the right side, actually. So in Chrome, you can click the the three dot menu and then choose to dock to the right. It also pops up with what's new with Chrome. That's annoying. I'm going to close that. I get various tabs here, elements. The one we want is console. So I said in the console log or display person. So that's what I'm seeing in the web browser the developers panel, console view, display an object, person. And inside of that, it's got the property first name and last name, alphabetized. Even though I wrote last name first and first name last, this will alphabetize it, which is fine. That doesn't matter. But I've done some output now to the console, the developers console. I can press F12 to open and close that. Resize that panel if you want. But we're going to often look at our code in this screen, console, because this is also the screen that will help you debug, which will help you figure out what errors you committed. If you typed something wrong, let's say I mistyped function, and then I try to run the code in the browser, uncaught syntax error unexpected token. I'm getting some sort of error message on line 12. Line 12. Oh, function is misspelled. So I fix that. I refresh it. No more error. So this console is extremely useful. If I close that and go back to JavaScript, I will add more properties to this object. Therefore, I need another comma. Notice I had no comma on the final property of this object. I need another comma for another property. This one will be age. Your age, my age. Notice this time I did not write it in quotes because this is a number type. The previous one was a string type. While I'm here, I will also add another property for height in feet. Now, if you want to do uh, centimeters and meters and all of that, that's fine. Height in feet, I'll do five, five feet, comma, one more. Height in, I-N, 10. It's the last property, so it has no comma at the end, but every other one needs a comma. If I save that, if I run it in the browser again, if I open my developer's console again, F12, in the console view, I see the object output at line 23. This was line 23, console.log. And if I open the object, I see everything I typed, alphabetized. Let's say I change one of these things, save it, and this time I'm going to refresh it instead of closing in it and opening it because it might be a little faster just to refresh. Chrome may display your object in a slightly different way. I think that's a kind of a quirk, and sometimes it's useful, sometimes it's not, but don't freak out if it changes. 
if yours looks like this instead of object. It seems that when you refresh and you're working with Chrome, you'll see your objects like that. But if you were to open the file the first time, it's going to show it to you as object with a little bit of triangle to open up. Either way is fine. Let's say I'd refreshed it. You'll still see the individual items here, but now instead of object, it will actually show you the object. So what are we doing here? Again, this comes from the book in the concepts of what JavaScript is, a object-oriented programming language, meaning JavaScript deals with objects. We invented an object right here known as person, but we also used an object that was built in called console. The console object is the web browser's console view. Let me show you what it looks like under Firefox. If you right-click, open with Firefox, if you've got Firefox, you'll get a result that also looks like that. But then when I press F12 to open the console, Firefox put it on the bottom here. Again, I kind of like it more on the right, which you can easily change it here, dock to the side. Firefox showed it in this way, object, and then the actual values I typed in the order that I typed. You can click on the word object to then have it display the properties of the object in the order that I saw in Chrome. It's just different ways to look at the same thing. Either way that you like, either browser is fine. So let's write some notes. You can write notes in JavaScript by writing comments. Let's back up here. After script, slash slash this is a single line comment you can use it for notes or we can create a multi-line comment like this slash asterisk asterisk slash now everything in the middle will be a comment this is a multi-line comment and what I want to write here is, we created a person object and added properties. What we did down here, we output the object to the console of the web browser. Well, I want to put I want to output this information to the main visible area of the of the browser not to the console. That's for us the developer. We want to output to the actual screen of the user. So we're going to write some javascript to output this object to the viewport. After console, we can type document dot write person. Remember to end these lines with a semicolon and type your code exactly as you've typed it before, meaning this object was typed with a lowercase p on line 30 and also line 19. Notice with visual code you can click on something and it will highlight it in other instances. Very useful. So now we're saying the document object, the dot write method, the object person. I'm going to save that, run it, and now on screen it says object. It's not exactly what I wanted, I wanted the actual data of the object. So I have to be more specific. I'm not trying to output the whole object. I'm trying to output, for example, dot last name. I'm trying to output one of the properties of that object. I created the property last name. I wrote that property to that object. The document object is the main visible area, the viewport of the website. I then use the write method to do something. 
So writing notes here. We'll do a multi-line note. JavaScript uses, we'll say, often uses methods on objects. Below, we used the dot write method to output the value of the last name property of the person object to the to the document object, the viewport, the main visible area of the website. That's what happens here. Well, it simply said my last name. I wanted to say my whole name as well as my age and height. So I'm going to change this. I'm going to remove person and its property and first write in quotes welcome space on the next line document dot write parentheses person dot first name semicolon at the end. What happens here now when I run it is that it says the words welcome and then whatever name is in the property first name. So if I were to change the property in my original object, what will output is the new value of that property. The word welcome is visible and doesn't change. It's static, but the object person and its property first name is dynamic. It can change. So notice I've got in quotes here on the dot right something that doesn't change. Well, I wanted to say my first name and my last name. So if I then write next line document dot right dot last name, semicolon, I should get welcome Victor Campos. What actually happens is welcome Victor Campos, meaning there's no space in between. I need to include the space as part of my code. So I would have to go back to write person dot first name, space plus quotes, and in that quote, a space. If I want literally a space to appear before, between first and last name, I have to write that space. So now I get first name, last name with a space. I want to write the age and then the height of the person. I'm going to continue here. It'll say, welcome, first name, last name, you are X years old. So plus to continue to add to my output, quotes, Welcome, first name, last name, comma, you are, space, plus, person, dot, age, space, plus, quotes, space, years old. So it will say the static content, welcome. It'll then write the dynamic content, first name, and an empty space. Then it'll write the dynamic content of last name then the static content of the comma plus the spaces, then the dynamic content of the age property, and then static content. The result in the browser, welcome Victor Campos, you are 30 years old. I'm able to change this then in the code, manually or in other ways, and it will change. I wanna write five foot ten but in the format of the of the foot symbol and the inch symbol 
So here's an example where we're going to create our own method. We've created an object person. We've used a, a built-in object document. We've also used a built-in method write and log. We want to create a method for our object that will combine the the feet and the inches together into one word, so to speak, so that we can then display it on screen. So going back to the person object, we're going to add something new to it. So that means comma, enter. I'm going to press another enter, which is optional. But this is to differentiate that what we're going to write here is a little bit different than what we've written before. The previous properties were static properties, so to speak. But here I want to create a method which will change. We'll write total height. Now, if all of the color coding changes, that's OK. It just means your code is not complete yet. We need colon, space. The code should go back to the regular color. This time, we'll write something called function which we've already looked at very briefly early on, but we'll have chapters later on that explain this much more. Notice the syntax here, function, open close parentheses, open close curly brace. It's the last item here, so no other syntax is necessary. I'm going to break up this function, pressing enter between the curly braces, because then what I want to do in here is combine the 5 feet and the 10 inches. VAR to create a variable, another object, which I'll call feet inches. This is a combination of feet and inches. Equal this dot height feet space plus quotes feet dot space plus this dot height in space plus quotes in dot semicolon. What this is doing is combining the feet value of this object person plus the inch value of this object along with the words feet and the words inch and the space in between. So all of that is being combined into sort of a shortcut feet inches. So we only need to really reference feet inches not the individual properties. Next line, return feet inches, semicolon. So we're saying whenever we use the total height method of the person property, it will return feet inches, the shortcut for what is the feet and what are the inches. To see that here, we will write to the document document object dot write method person dot total height open close parentheses that result is that it says 5 feet 10 inches looks really ugly because I didn't exactly specify very much but you should see that now it says 5 feet 10 inches. We've invoked the total height method of the person object, which we defined up here. Person object, total height method. It's a method because it's a function. It's a sequence of steps. And yes, the dot write method has a sequence of steps that are built into JavaScript. The dot log method has a sequence of steps built in. The console object has a variety of properties and values built in, and the document object has a variety of properties and values. So again, JavaScript is an object-oriented programming language. 
Well, I want to write this in a nice way. So first what I'll do, before that line, document dot write quotes br. This is the break tag, the HTML tag. So JavaScript can also write HTML code. This br tag, which will break the line from the previous line, is rendered when we run the project, it will break. Then it will write the total height. Well, I want some context, so I will again write some words here. Quotes plus space. We're going to say you are space total height. The plus symbol works different from regular math. 1 plus 1 equals 2. In JavaScript, the plus 1 plus 1 equals 11, which will make more sense later. But basically, you are adding this plus that just visually on screen. When you save it and you refresh it, you get a new line. That's what the BR did on line 43. And then it says you are 5 foot 10 inches. So our total height method created the 5 foot 10 inch words. I think this is a good amount to look at so far. If you were completely lost, shame on you, you didn't read the book. Read chapter 1 to fill in some of the details. This is a hands-on example based on what we learned in our first chapter, the idea of objects and methods and functions of JavaScript. Based on what I did here, you will have a homework assignment. Make sure you check Canvas to see the date that it's due and the full requirements. So this is our first chapter in our Road to Learning JavaScript. This has been Victor Campos. See you in the next video.